is I've got some pickups from McFly's 8bitavenue.com. Now, uh, that's like, I'm going to tell you, McFly's 8-Bit Avenue is one of my favorite websites other than YouTube. Um, so I'm going to go through the games that I got from his website and um, I'm just going to tell you right now, McFly has some of the best or no, the best retro gaming prices you are going to get on the internet. Trust me. Trust me when I say that because you won't see prices like these anywhere else. I In my lifetime, I have never seen a, an original Nintendo NES game that was one dollar. Never, ever seen anything like that until going to his website. So, check him out. It's really, really, really good packaging. Uh, great shipping costs to uh, Tennessee, at least. And just uh, an awesome website. So the first game that I picked up is Dragon Spirit. Now, uh, this game is a uh, horizontal shooter, and a really good one, too, um, from what I played of it. Although I cannot get past level 3, so, uh, let's see. Here's a little pickup here for you. Uh, Time Lord. Um, I briefly played this for like two minutes just to see if it worked. So, um, I really have no opinion on this, but it was in really good condition when it came. Um, although I will say all of these games were extremely dirty. Um, on, on the pins at least. Um, because I just use this, Brasso, um, and isopropyl alcohol, and glass cleaner. And if you just get some Q-tips, that'll just clean everything right off. So just take the cartridge apart and, uh, clean it with that. That's what, that's what I did. If, uh, you need a screwdriver to open the carts up, for NES games, a 3.8 uh, millimeter bit, I think that's the name of the screwdriver. I'll probably throw a picture of it up or something, put a link down in the description. But, um, McFly, if you're watching this, uh, I would recommend that you clean the uh, games uh, on the inside and outside before you sell them. Uh, that's, that's just my recommendation. Um, because it's more likely people will buy it that way, but I personally buy a lot of dirty games and, uh, games with, like, stickers on them because I can easily clean that stuff off. Like, it's, it's not that hard to do. Just, if you want to get stickers off, just use lighter fluid over the stickers, which I... I could do that, but, you know, I'm gonna leave the stickers on these games because, well, it gives them more personality, I think, and more character, so I like leaving the stickers on there. Um, speaking of stickers, the stickers that he put on here for the price tags are just so easy to come off, to get them to come off. I don't think anybody else has mentioned that yet, but I'm, I'm gonna go and say it because... They're really, really good stickers to just peel off. So they're great uh, for for the games um, and to protect their uh, condition. So, um, yeah, the only complaint that I could make about his website is that the games are kind of dirty. But, you know, I, I clean every single game that I get anyway, so why the heck am I complaining? But to somebody else, that might be a bit of an issue, you know, if they don't have any Brasso on hand. So, let's get to the next game. Oh, there's Gyrus. Um, Rad Racer 2. Now, this is one of the games that is not compatible with the Retron 1. Um, which is why I got it, because I recently got a regular toaster NES, and, uh, I was dying to play this, because this is one of the games that I had on my list that I wanted to play that I could not play because of that stupid freaking Retron, and it's incompatibility. So, glad to add this to the collection. It's kind of hard, but it's also really, really fun. Um, 
I picked up uh, Marble Madness on the NES. Now, I already had this game for the um, PC, I believe. Um, I think so. On emulation, that is. Not, not like the actual floppy. Um, and I, th I think I also own it for the Genesis. I'll have like an edit or something if if it's uh, if that's false. But uh, Marble Madness on the NES. Glad to own this. This is a fun game. Um, I'm probably not going to play it all that much though because well I've had a lot of experience with it and I have so many other games to play. That's like that's just a game you pick up and play just to you know have fun one day after a hard day of being bullied at school or something like that. So. Um, Oh, that's a little personal commentary right there. Uh, so we got Star Tropics. Now, this game's really, really cool, and I was really glad that the battery worked in this. There were still some save files, which I always like looking at those. Um, and, uh, of course, I deleted them, though, so I could have my own saves. But, uh, thing to note is this game is actually heavier than most NES games. Not by much though, because it's really it's really hard to to tell because they're so light. But whatever. Um, Star Tropics is a pretty fun game. Uh, I got this for four dollars and fifty cents, I believe, which is a freaking awesome price for Star Tropics, because I believe this is like a eight six dollar game. Um, I might be overshooting that though. This is a really cool uh, RPG. The game is based on like a grid, so it's different than than most of the RPGs on the NES. Uh, I really like that game, to be honest. Uh, we got Kings of the Beach. This is a really cool pick up and play game, and apparently it's from Chimps Comics. Yeah, and they have a website, so I'm gonna check that out now. Um, so McFly, you just brought business to chimps for me um, because this is in really good condition uh, anyway so yeah I haven't really formed a huge opinion on this game I think it's fun but it's also lacking compared to some of the other volleyball games on the NES but it's made by ultra and I'm trying to get all the ultra games on the NES so I can review all of them but uh, I think it's fun. Uh, it gets kind of fast-paced later, but it doesn't really pick up much speed, which I like. My volleyball games, if I play them, I like them with a lot of speed, and that just really doesn't have much of it. Now, here's a game that you're going to be surprised I got. Um, I saw Rewind Mike review that. Uh, Shout-outs to Rewind Mike. Go check him out. He His channel is just really, really good. It's just freaking amazing, which... Um, I still think it's pretty good, but now it's more of like a Let's Play channel now, which... <sighs> I don't want to give my opinion on Let's Plays. I tried to watch some of his Let's Play videos, I just... I just, I can't do it. I, ca I can't, I can't do it. Because they're just... <sighs> I'm not trying to hate on Rewind Mike or anything, it's just Let's Play videos are not my thing. Um, I'm sure... To an average Let's Play watcher, I'm sure they're pretty good to them, but, you know, I'm just not a, a Let's Play fan. Benevolent Dick is actually my favorite Let's Player, because he does it so differently. If you can even call those videos Let's Plays, I don't know if you can, because they're just heavily edited content. Whatever, I'm getting off on a ramble. But his reviews back when... I don't know if, if he even still does reviews. I, he did a Mega Man X review recently, which took him freaking forever to do. Um, which was really, 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 really good. I mean, I love that review. It's one of my favorite videos on YouTube, to be honest. So, when he still does reviews, they're really good. But right now, he's just doing like a Let's Play type thing, which I'm not into, so I haven't been watching him much lately. He's got this whole Rewind Mike TV thing going on. I'm, I'm just not into it. But, you know, if he comes back with, like, at least a pickups video, um, he'll be my one of my favorite channels again. But, you know, I think uh, that, you know, the whole Let's Play thing is kind of, 
it's his channel, he can do whatever he wants, but I think it's kind of damaging what his channel used to be. But that's just my opinion, you know, feel free to disagree with me if you're, like, a hardcore fan of him. Uh, he's got, like, 200 plus subs right now, I think. Um, but his reviews are very, very, very good. They just, it feels like they put you into the game, and you can feel like there's a passion a passion just resonating and just irradiating from his reviews it just makes it just makes them very very special and i i hold them dear to my heart because his reviews are really really good uh, really just really good um and he finally back to little mermaid on the nes by capcom he reviewed this for his nes disney capcom month uh, last year, which was freaking amazing. I love, I love those reviews. I really do. Um, he reviewed this game and he liked it. He said it was good. It's, he said it was easy and everything, but it was, it was really fun. So that enticed me to check this game out. And for the last like year or so, however, however long it's been, I've been wanting to check this game out. Um, but I just haven't. So, I finally got a copy of Little Mermaid because I found it for a decent price. $6 off 8-Bit Avenue. Um, again, shout-outs to McFly. Go check out his website. Great deals. But, um, I picked this one up. And I really like this game. I really do. But my NES broke on me while I was playing it. So, I didn't get too far into it. I think I got onto like, the fourth level or something like that. Um, Wrath of the Black Manta, um, I haven't played it yet, I've had a ton of games to play, I just haven't gotten to this one, but it looks like a cool game, it's made by Tato, which is a good thing. Do, 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 do. Let's see, got last, last three here, last three, I got all in the S. Um, The Goonies 2, which, um... I heard good things about, but I was like, it's a Goonies game, like, how how good could it be? But after I played this, I really liked it, uh, to be honest. It ma it's made by Konami, so I kind of expected it to be good, but it's also a licensed game, and you know, hoo-ha. But, um, there actually, I don't think ever was a Goonies 2, so this game is like a sequel to the movie. Uh, I played it for about 10 minutes, I really liked it. Save that one for last, I guess. Um, Star Soldier. Um, I haven't played this a ton, but I heard good things about it. And I, well, I like this game. Um, to be honest, it's it's pretty good. I I think it's good. Anyway, I got it for like two dollars off Eight Bit Avenue, so I got a good recommendation from it from you know the fam, and uh, the fam never disappoints. You know, the YouTube community is always good. And, uh, so I got recommended Star Soldier by a friend of mine on YouTube, and, uh, well, it's, it's actually pretty good. I enjoy this game, like, I enjoy every single one of the games that I purchased from him, so I'm really happy with that. Uh, the condition is pretty good, it's got some sticker tearing, but that's alright, the game plays, it works, and the rest of it seems to be in alright condition, so, you know, it's shiny. That, and it's it's a fun game, really. It's a fun game. That's all. That's all that matters, to be honest. It's a horizontal shooter. Uh, go check it out. I got it for two dollars. We got Sky Shark. Now, um, just look at this cover. Just look at that. It's so. It, it's just extreme. It's just so extreme, like because. The plane looks, you know, just very military movie type. And then, you know, we've got all these things blowing up and just flying or flailing about in the background. And uh, I think the art on this is pretty good. Like, the detail on the face is, it looks pretty cool. But, um, uh, the, the thing about the guy, the guy on the cover that I really like about him is he just looks so angry and extreme. I I just found that funny when I first saw that. He looks like he's taking a crap, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, it's 
game's alright. It feels like Star Soldier, uh, to be honest. It's made by Tato, which is a good thing. I like Tato. They make good games. They made Saint Sword. They made uh, Little Samson, which is awesome. Or I think they published it, whatever. Uh, they made um, Shatterhand. A lot of good games on the NES. And then there's some of their more obscure ones like Sky Shark. So, um, it's alright. You know, I enjoyed it uh, for like the three minutes that I played it, but it feels a lot like Star Soldier, and it doesn't really seem like you're in like a plane or uh, one of the ships. It feels more like a spaceship type shooter. Uh, maybe that's just me, but uh, I like this game well enough. Um, the cover art, you just buy it for the cover art alone because, you know, look at that face. How can, how can you say no to that face? Anyway, so this is the last game that I picked up from McFly's 8-bit shop just to show you a quick rundown this is all of them right here a lot of a lot of games I'm really trying to build up my NES collection how long have I been talking Jesus 16 minutes um, so yeah these are my McFly 8-bit Avenue pickups go hit McFly up buy everything on the okay maybe not everything don't buy the NES games because I'm gonna buy those I'm going to buy those um, uh, I'm just kidding you I'm gonna buy them but you know you can you can buy them if you want I'm just messing with y'all um, so buy everything off his website while you can because trust me at prices like these they're just gonna they're they're just gonna disappear um, oh, that was weird anyway so those are my McFly pickups. Go check out his channel. He's got a really good channel. It's one of my favorites on YouTube, actually, because, you know, he's just a very honest man, and uh, I can I can respect that, you know. Um, very genuine. Uh, anyway, uh, like I said, those are my McFly pickups, all good games. A lot of spaceship shooters in there, which I love my shmups. As you probably know, or my shooters, uh, for all you old school fans out there.